The Best Actress category has been a part of the Academy Awards since the very first ceremony in 1929. Today, we will honor the women who have won gold and cemented themselves in film history. I'm Austin Johnson. I'm Connor is Gary. And this is a Filmgasm bonus. Welcome back to our Oscar run. Uh, a few weeks ago, we did a big Philip Summer Hoffman episode uh, in honor of his 10 year anniversary of his death. And then after that, we did a best animated feature film cup. A lot of fun. Uh, then last week we did a best original song playlist. That was an absolute blast. And this week we're, we're just continuing having fun here talking about Oscar related things. Uh, we're featuring best actress winners, best lead actress winners. And uh, love this category. Always have, you know, these performance categories are always loaded with superstars and uh, character actors alike. So uh, I'm stoked to kind of talk about this, but I want to open up with uh, a, a short discussion maybe about the current landscape here that's coming up. The 96th Academy Awards are just around the corner and we have a pretty good group of women. And uh, Connor, I want to say, who are, you, who are you pulling for here? Who's your who's your horse? Uh, I am 100% behind Lily Gladstone. Mm, yes. Um, and I think pretty much everybody is. I don't think she really has. Uh, it's her Oscar to lose as far as I'm concerned. I mean, everyone, like all five of these of these women are real are great in their performances. Um, but she was just amazing in this like very subtle, insanely painful performance that she just was, you know, going toe to toe with. DiCaprio and De Niro, which is not an easy feat. Uh, and I just really want to see, I want to see her win because of uh, what that, like the representation at play here and how important this domination is to the Academy and to cinematic history. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And like those things are great. And then you watch the movie and you're like, oh my God, she's just really, really fucking good. Uh, Kills of the Flower Moon available on Apple TV plus right now. Um, Probably will be forever. Is that going to get a like Blu-ray re- release or what's up with that? Apple is pretty notorious for not releasing any of their content physically, so I don't think so. <sighs> That's upsetting, you know. Um, no killers, Coda, Napoleon, Tetris. There's no none of wow, that. There's no there's no DVD or, or Blu-ray of Coda. Wow, I didn't know the that. O- the only one I've ever seen on DVD is on the rocks. Oh yeah, and that's like a very but, average movie. Yeah. That might have been a bootleg. I'm not entirely sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that sucks, man. Uh, God, even I'm trying to think. Even like um, <clears throat> like Netflix, uh, like uh, off the top of my head, like Roma and Marriage Story both were, are like Criterion selected mm-hmm. and have have you know DVDs, Blu-rays, whatnot. Yeah. Um, it's really unfortunate that Apple TV, especially the killers, man. You know, if you're uh, uh, cinephile like ourselves you want to stack up those scorsese movies and that's really really frustrating because i i i want to rewatch it right like i haven't i've loved it in theaters i want to revisit it and i i'm having a hard time like because i know if i just pull it up on apple tv plus or whatever and like i i have like the option to like you know exit out of the app whenever i want or or whatever i just feel like if i had the blu-ray or or, or even dvd and i could put it into the player i feel like it'll be more personal experience and i want to have that i want some bonus features you know i want i want some things to watch because i think that movie is so good uh but yeah lily gladstone is for me the standout um in in that movie i wish leo was up for best actor but you know there's only five spots um the other nominees you know end up benning for niad eh, decent flick it's it, you know it's it came it came came and went it feels like um sandra huller for anatomy of a fall uh she also you know is uh from what I've heard from you and others, uh, pretty breathtaking and a uh, zone of interest as well. Um, Carrie Mulligan for Maestro and Emma Stone for Poor Things. So it's a strong group of women. You know, these are legit actresses, you know, uh, Emma Stone, Carrie Mulligan, Annette Benning. This is, you know, multiple Oscar nominated actresses. Uh, Sandra Huller, I feel like is someone who has been around in her own, you know, realm, 
in her own world, um, who's been a good actress and now uh, an Oscar nomination can kind of change the game. And same thing for Lily. Yeah. You you saw Anatomy of a Fall, right? Oh, yeah. Love it. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, your, your phrasing there made me think like, wait a minute, did you not see this yet? <laughs> I haven't seen Zone of Interest. Um, oh, well, she's up for Anatomy of a Fall. Yeah, no, I know. I'm saying I think a lot of people thought she was just as good in that. I, well, her, all right, so. <laughs> <laughs> she's she's evil, so yeah, that's she's different, but. pure fucking inhuman evil in Zone of Interest, but also that movie is very much not in any way a performance piece. It's It's entirely, <laughs> it's a cinematographer's piece, if anything. Yeah, sound and sound, right? Yeah. So, if, like, if you want to see Sandra Hewler as a performer and not as really part of the set design, watch Anatomy of a Fall. Yeah, and Anatomy of a Fall, in its own right, just as a movie, it won you know the Palme d'Or. Like, it's a you know pretty beloved movie. I I think it's awesome. I yeah. it's real weird because like I just just my my brother and his uh, girlfriend were just down here uh, a few days ago, and uh, they they're visiting for a few days, and they. You know, we were talking about movies that have come out the past year and talking about Oscar stuff, and uh, they just like thought and how they thought Anatomy of Fall was just like really boring and no good. They thought Oppenheimer wasn't good. I'm like, man, what the fuck? Like, <laughs> and, and then and then you like remind yourself, you know, you're like people just watch movies differently and people take different things from them, and they're very different watchers. Whereas they were both like Poor Things is like so clearly the best movie of the year, uh, obviously huge regret of mine that i haven't seen that it's you know like really bothering me it's like i'm a i'm like a a false prophet (laughs) (laughs) Uh, a a false disciple of of yorgos lanthimos um you know so that's really frustrating but i will get to it i will get poor things i'll get to that one american fiction is now like on vod and, and whatnot i'll wait till that gets on something or drops in price and zone of interest is the other big one that i haven't seen yet so i'll get to those though man i have some time it is, it's weird. So I kind of feel like I'm in bizarro world because I've seen Yorgos's new film and loved it before you've seen it. And also I'm defending a French crime drama. Like what? <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're growing up before our very own eyes. So. I am. <laughs> it's, I'm, I'm evolving and it's hilarious. Uh, have you watched um, Barry Keoghan's uh, Hot Ones episode? Uh, part of it, yes. Okay, so first first off, I want to say I've always gone back and forth on pronouncing his name. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've like I I used to say like Barry Ke- Keon, like I used to like do it like oh I thought like the G and H were like almost silent. Yeah, and then I was like, and then I heard people say Keegan, so I was like, oh, I was wrong. And then on the Hot Ones at the very end, he says his own name, and he says. Barry Keoghan and I was like ah all right so that's the right way that's That's how you gotta that's how you gotta find out what these names really are pronounced you gotta hear them say it themselves that's the only like pure way yeah yeah because I've been corrected before like people like no it's Keegan and I'm like I I mean I don't know like I (laughs) and here finally no it's a great it's a great you know Hot Ones is awesome Sean Evans is the fucking man he's like one of the best hosts uh like in in YouTube's existence and uh that episode's really cool, and they, he asks some questions about Yorgos, and uh, Barry says he's like I, he's like I think Yorgos is uh, our, our like today's Stanley Kubrick, and I was like oh my god I feel <laughs> I feel the exact same way I've never I've never heard a guy who worked with him think that like the same way I've thought it for five years now. It's awesome. My favorite thing about Hot Ones is watching pasty white people destroy <laughs> their palates in real time. <laughs> Especially from the British Isles, because they don't know oh, what yeah. food is until it's too late. Yeah, yeah. Luckily, luckily, you know, I I am a, a quite a white white fellow here, but uh, growing up in Texas, you definitely uh, are going to be challenged uh, as far as yeah, you, sp- spice spice and whatnot. So I love that shit. Yeah, you didn't grow up in Suffolk eating brown bread <laughs> and milk for the first thirty years of your life. So and stew. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I've, I've grown up. I've grown up, fortunately, around a lot of like great, you know, Tex-Mex, and uh, of course, we get some like that Cajun stuff that comes comes over from Louisiana, and uh, yeah, I like I like just trying shit. So uh, that that show's always intrigued me, um, and yeah, I just, I just watched that today, the Barry episode and the um, the old Jacob Elordi one. We, uh, my wife and I were feeling a little a little hot ones back to back, and uh, those guys are awesome. So that was a lot of fun. 
Very nice. Yeah, very nice. I think I uh, we didn't really talk about Carrie Mulligan at all uh, for Maestro or Emma Stone. Um, yeah, so so Emma Stone, obviously, uh, you know, you you liked Poor Things. You just mentioned how you're kind of defending uh, Yorgos's new movie. And uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I, I don't have much of a say, but she just won the BAFTA. So that's sick. Yeah, that was fun. I watched some of the BAFTAs. Uh, yeah, I like I like the BAFTAs. Uh, I do, too. I, I, I hold them like second. Yeah. Um, in the grand scheme of the awards circuit, I hold him like second to the Oscars. Well, David Tennant's just a charming, like he was a charming host. He was perfect. And I just, it seemed like it didn't have as much cutesy shit as the Oscars seemed a little bit more streamlined. Yep. I like that. Uh, but yeah, Emma Stone is probably the second, like close second for this Oscar. Yeah. I, I could see her stealing it for sure. It yeah. would be neat to see her become a two time winner. Um, but Carrie Mulligan and Maestro was she was the best part of that movie. Uh, she was fantastic. I agree. I agree. Yeah, it was like she. <laughs> it was like she was you know, she was trying, and Bradley Cooper was like, "Please give me an Oscar. I'll, I'll wear as many fake no. noses as as you want. Just give me a, give me an Oscar." That's not how you make music. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but I don't know. We'll see. Honestly, I think outside of like Killian Murphy and Robert Downey Jr., I think uh, the other, well, Divine Joy Randolph pretty much has it for supporting actress as well. So this, yeah. this, this one, I guess, is probably the most unpredictable of the of the uh, acting categories. Yeah, yeah, I think you're right. I think yeah, this is a, an actual race between Lily and Emma. Um, Sandra and Carrie looking on the outside in, and Annette Benning, I think, has no chance. So... Uh, <laughs> That's not. I love. I love Annette Benning. Like I really do. Five time Oscar nominee. Now uh, she's yeah. awesome. But this if, movie's just kind of like. I don't know. It's just forgettable. If she was gonna get it, she would have gotten it for American Beauty. She ain't winning it for Naya. Yeah, correct. I mean, even 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 like the kids are all right. She's uh, to me like way more memorable in that movie than Naya. Yeah. I just. I don't know. Naya I, yeah, just didn't seem like it needed to be a movie. A documentary, sure, but like it's. Yeah, it's cool that she swam all that way, but how do you turn that into a movie? Yeah, no, it's great. It's a great feat. It's really cool. I'm glad that Benning, you know, like she did a lot of the swimming herself, and that's that's really cool. That's like an athletic thing. But yeah, it it, it just became so uh, so predictable because they kept doing the same. They go out to sea, and it, and I was like, why are they doing this over and over? They they could have built more tension by not showing every single time they went out. And she just like, oh, get, you know, whatever, 40 miles and be like, oh, I got stunned by jellyfish. And so that happened like nine times in a row. By the end, you're just kind of like, well, I mean, OK, you know, it's I've I've been watching a lady swim for like an hour and a half. I, I don't I don't need this. <laughs> it reminded me a lot of Chariots of Fire. Like, mm, you can't really mm. make a movie about running either. There's certain sports that are just aren't cinematic. It, that, yeah. 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 Swimming, that, yeah, running shot put i would imagine i don't think anyone's tried yeah no no the yeah track and field is not a great uh yeah thing for you know mo most like popular olympic sports are going to be hard to like really make something cool about unless you've got a great story outside of the the sport you know um you know so that yeah that's definitely that's a good call uh so yeah naya and jody foster is also up she's also a five-time nominee and she's up for supporting actress and I mean, cool. I, I I love her as well, but it just seems kind of like it feels like there's a lot cooler. Um, again, more things that could use, or more people that could use exposure for those spots. That would be like a lot cooler. So I don't know. I just I always raise my eyebrow when they keep giving it to the same women over and over for like kind of standard work. Yeah, yeah, I agree. There's just like name stays. At least you know, at least Meryl Streep sat this one up. <laughs> Yeah, dude. Oh my God. Speaking of speaking of Meryl Streep, that's a great great segue. Um, <laughs> Meryl Streep. Some people could say is the, is the goat when it comes to uh, comes to the Oscars. Uh, let, let's 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 talk about that. Let's talk about that for a second. So what we're doing today is honoring best lead actress winners by doing a a um, heist movie draft. We've done this before uh, months ago with uh, best supporting actor. Uh, you, myself, and Adam. Uh, we kind of tacked that project onto the moonlight episode because Mahershala Ali won best supporting actor that year, uh, 2016. And we kind of did like a really fun, we picked five, um, actors each 
that had one uh, best supporting actor. So we're going to do a similar thing here today. Uh, we have five spots, and I'll explain those here in a little bit. But before we, you know, let's get our juices flowing on on um, best best lead actress. So you know, Catherine Hepburn famously she's won four of these motherfuckers. So that's insane, <laughs> like completely unprecedented. It's not it's not going to happen again unless McDormand does it. Uh, I just I I don't think someone's going to be as dominant, you know. Yeah. Uh, in the modern in the modern movie world, uh, she's nominated twelve times for for for, for lead actress, uh, and then McDormand has three. Uh, you know, Meryl Streep has two, and then she has one supporting. But she also has, I think, Meryl Streep has twenty three nominations altogether, which yeah. is insane. So, what do you what do you hold uh, in a higher esteem? Do you hold Catherine Hepburn four wins, twelve nominations, or Meryl Streep? I think it's two wins on twenty one. Or something like that, high teens maybe uh, for best lead actress. She has, you know, she has her supporting uh, nods as well. But uh, which one do you do you think it's more important to get as many wins as you can, or is it is a nomination just as valuable? Oh, a nomination is just as valuable. I I agree. I agree. It, it's all about recognition and being, you know, being recognized by your peers as you know one of the great one of the best performances of the year. The winner is is cool too, you know, but. The Academy Award nominee title, I think, is just as valuable. And there are some performances out there, that, you know, nominated, not, nominated performances that, in my opinion, like eclipse a lot of the winners. So it's really just, you know, the good work and the the more you can kind of cement your legacy with these nominations, you know. I mean, I think if Meryl Streep, for instance, just if she only had those three wins, I think she'd be considered, you know, a good actor is like a, you know one of the one of the greats, but all those nominations are they all mean something. They all represent a significant performance in her catalog, and you know mm. she'll always have those. And those I think those are why she's considered the goat more than anything. <clears throat> yeah, she's collected so fucking many yeah. nominations. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I'm with you. You know, while I do I do love that like uh, Daniel Day Lewis. He won three uh, on six nominations altogether. That's like, wow, look at that batting average. Like, it's just crazy to win half the time that you were nominated. But, like, Denzel Washington, I think, has nine performance uh, nominations. Like, I, I think that's more impressive. And two wins. I, li- I like that resume better from Denzel as far as, um, you know, as far as the Oscars go. I think uh, Jack Nicholson has three wins altogether on 12 nominations. Like, yeah. fuck yeah. That's, that's like... Jack has the most nominations for any male actor and yeah. Streep, Streep has the record for, for uh, actresses. Yeah, there you go. And, and Jack, I mean, we've talked about this before, Jack, half of them, <laughs> half and half of his best roles are any, aren't even in that group of 12. Like it's fucking crazy. You know, like the shining and Batman, like the like super popular um, roles that he had aren't even a part of that 12. So yeah, that's just insane. At the end of the day, it's about the work. It's about, the films that they are a part of, that they try their hardest to be seen in and perform in. And we get to just kind of enjoy all of that work forever. And if the Academy wants to throw them a bone and recognize them as, you know, in that, in that world, great. But you know, what it's, is it going to, it's for me personally, like an an Oscar nominated film is not going to, like I'm, I'm going to consider it an equal to, to a non Oscar nominated film. I just want a good film. Oh, for sure, right? This is just gravy. Um, yeah. All this stuff. Yeah, dude. Yeah, it, it's all. Yeah, like like no matter what happens uh, on March 10th, there are dozens of women who have put in amazing, amazing performances in 2023 that are that aren't even going to get shouted out. No. And I, I hold them just as valuable. Like like Tiana Taylor. And a thousand and one is to me like the best performance man or woman that I saw from the whole year. And like, nobody cares, you know, but I care and her fans care. And so that's like all that matters. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I think this year specifically because I was able to buy the Alamo draft house season pass and was able to get really, really cheap tickets to anything playing uh, at a draft house. I was more plugged in to the, current film calendar than I ever have been in my life. And I kept up the entire year and saw so many different kinds of films. And the spectrum was just marvelous. Like I saw past lives months before people were 
talking about Oscar uh, contention, like, and just got to enjoy that film as a film. I didn't go see it because I was like, oh, two Oscar nominations. I got to go watch that. I watched it and just was basking in this tragic love story. Like, that's what it's all about. The Oscar nominations are just, you know, well, that's cool. And then, you know, you, you want to keep up if you're, if you're, if you're that kind of person, which I am, but I was just seeing films this year, just mm. looking at stuff like, you know, the holdovers and Priscilla and, you know, poor things, killers, like just whatever looked interesting and intriguing and unique. And I'm so glad I did that. Cause now I feel like I have so much more ammo for any potential conversations that come about out of all this. Yeah, and and you were entertained a good chunk of the year, <laughs> you know. And like, I saw some, you know, I saw some shit too. It's you know, it's a gamble. Yeah, and that, that that comes with it, and ate and ate a lot of good food. So you know, that's uh, <laughs> had some good milkshakes. Yeah, that's <laughs> that's all. That's all part of part of the jam. Yeah. So yeah, ultimately, you know, the way like you explain a lot of how I see it, we both agree that you know the Oscars is like it's just kind of gravy. What I what I do hold value in, and why I do care about the outcome and why I care about who gets nominated to an extent is when someone does get that gold or when a movie does get that gold, it has potential to change the career of multiple people. Mm, Yeah. And, and that is huge. Like everything, ever all at once. Great example. Just last year released in, I think March. Um, became a big word of mouth movie. Oh my God, you have to see this new A24 movie. Oh my God, Michelle Yeoh, like who the, holy shit, she's, you know, this is like a Yeoh Yeo renaissance, you know, and uh, here we go. You know, she's going to get her, her her due. Brendan Fraser, same thing. You know, he got his due. Um, but with everything I wrote at once, after it won Best Picture, it re-released into theaters <laughs> like, and was able to make even more money. And now the Daniels can, even, can do even more things for their, like for their career. Now Michelle Yeoh's name brand is in a different stratosphere than it was before and that's important that matters i'll always defend the oscars for that whether it's bullshit or not it doesn't really matter it matters when moonlight won best picture i think it had made you know like somewhere in the teens for um box office and then it was released again after it won and made an additional like 10 million dollars that that's a big big deal like that's a lot of money that can go to the you know the studio or a future project for Barry Jenkins, which is what it did. Barry was like, "Oh, cool! I got all this recognition. Now I'm going to go make the movie I really, really, really wanted to make, which is an adaptation of a James Baldwin novel." Like that's that's what that's what it's all about, you know? Is people get recognition, they get rewarded for it. That's true. Yeah, it's it's, it's all about opening doors and networking and having, you know, for lack of a better word, value attached to your name. In, in an industry that's insanely competitive and constantly yeah. screwing people over for the wrong reasons. So, you know, you got to have something you got to, what are you bringing to the table? And what have you done for me lately? Are the two questions that are asked the most in Hollywood and the Oscars give people an opportunity to, you know, throw that gold on the table and be like this, this is why you should hire me. Uh, yeah. And, and, you know, a, a lot of, a, a lot of people who don't, uh, uh, don't agree with with you know awarding art like I, I'm with you to an extent, but then we can't we can't say that and be like oh you know all, our art is art you know we shouldn't you know put labels on it and say first second you know or third we shouldn't do that. But then we can't if that's how we believe and that's how we think about things, then we can't go the other way and celebrate when you know the the lead actress from Halloween 1979. Or 1978 wins Best Actress. We can't celebrate that if we disagree with it fundamentally. So, you and I were watching that show together. When she went on stage, we were like, "Jamie Lee Curtis, fuck yeah!" You know. And I know a lot of genre fans that are in my life, like that I work with and stuff, who are celebrating that win. It's like, whoa, 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 whoa hold on. You, you can't have it both ways. <laughs> <laughs> you, you cannot, you cannot be someone who's like, "Oh, this, this stuff sucks. It's bullshit," and like not watch it. But then you catch her speech on Twitter and you're like, yeah, get him, Jamie. It's like, well, well, if it didn't matter, then it didn't matter. You know what I mean? So I, I just like, ah, you know, the tables have turned. You know, when, um, when someone like Brendan Fraser, Q Kwan, and Jimmy Lee Curtis win in the same night, hey, Michelle, yo, you, you're, you're going to get inspired. Oh, dude, last year's show was so 
delightful and just worth worth it. It was, it was so nice to see the right people win, like have have their careers, like their career defining moment. Like, yeah, it was so nice to see, you know, especially guys who've had a rough go of it, like Brendan Fraser and Kehoe Kwan, who uh-huh. just kind of been like thrown away by Hollywood to now be on yep. their on the biggest stage getting an Oscar for their work. It was so rewarding. And me being a lifelong fan of all four of those people was so fucking fantastic. I, I had such a great time just watching them be happy. Yeah, me too. And you know what happened to Brendan Fraser? He got casted in a fucking Martin Scorsese movie. Like <laughs> that's, you know, that that's the juice. That's the, that's why we care. That's why you and I give a shit, you know, is those moments are you, you called it career defining. Why is it career defining? Because they got that fucking statue, <laughs> you know, uh, like it, we, you and I are on the same page. It's very gray. You know, the Oscars are gray for us. We're not like, oh, this is the only thing that matters. But we also recognize that it does hold a pretty, pretty great value. Well, you know, movies are like my favorite form of art. They're a huge part of my life. So obviously I'm going to be interested and intrigued by the giant award ceremony for film like yeah i'm gonna pay attention to that <laughs> yeah, yeah even if it is a stroke fest like yeah. I'm, it's very I'm obvious it. that this is you know if it's hollywood you know finally figuring out how to suck itself off for three hours i'm well aware of that they've been doing it for 96 years but yeah but you know you know what we do that when we go to the theater and we see one of their massive productions as well so here's the thing no matter how you may think <laughs> all right this is gonna be hard to i'm gonna I'm, all right so no matter how weird you may think it is to watch somebody suck themselves off, if you if if somebody could do it, you're you're going to watch. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's something oh, yeah, you want to be able to say, like, dude, you're not going to believe what I saw yesterday. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's uh, that's something you're not. Yeah, it might not be pleasant, but you're not going to look yeah. away. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a it's a story. <laughs> it's a moment. And you you chose to be there. So that's the way I see it with the Oscars it's like. I'm not going to complain no matter how this pans out. If the people I don't want to win, win. If some crazy shit happens, like someone gets attacked, well, shit. I still watched it. I, you know, I'm here for me. <laughs> That's fucking brilliant. Oh, God, I love it. You ready to draft? <laughs> <laughs> Why not? Sure. Let's do it. <laughs> yeah, let's go from uh, envisioning some guy sucking himself off uh, in an alleyway and then uh, draft some, draft some. <laughs> some people <laughs> for a heist heist movie uh this is this is right up our alley dude you know we we fuck around with stuff like this all the time uh when we did it for best supporting actor i was like man we need to do that again that was so much fun uh so here we are this time it's with with the ladies so the way i explained it last time was there's five spots for the heist team that's going to be in your hypothetical movie yeah. now there's there's the team leader slash mastermind uh think you know like ben affleck in the town yeah uh you got your crowd control slash brute you know your 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 force that's kind of like the jeremy renner from the town type you know uh you got your safe cracker which is like a like belushi and a fucking thief you know you you got your guy who's like specializes in actually getting the money out of the safe uh, using different tools uh then you have your your driver yeah every every team has to have a driver you know somebody can Someone who can operate multiple, diff- you know, different kinds of vehicles, uh, you know, can get away from police, you know, do little chases and, uh, you know, that's that's an essential job. And then uh, to me, kind of like more of a wild card, last fifth spot is a kind of like a tech guy, a hacker, you know, someone who's really good at, you know, you know, getting into security systems and figuring stuff out. They might be operating from like a van, you know, like in a lot of uh, old heist movies, they're like the guy who's got the old school computer and he's fucking typing away and you're like what is that guy doing (laughs) but but he's always like real smart and really cool it's always a unique character so that's the five spots and we're picking actresses who have won best lead actress now there's a there's there's some rules there because like we said you know there are women who have won multiple times if you want to pick Catherine Hepburn you have to pick one of those four years slash roles that she won and if you pick Connor, if you pick Catherine Hepburn, she's off the table no matter what. Mm. That takes away that takes away all four of her uh, wins. Same with Francis McDormand, you know. Same with Meryl Streep. Like you cannot pick someone 
twice. So I can't, we can't both have Ingrid Bergman, <laughs> you know, <laughs> that, 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 that ain't happening. So uh, that's kind of the, the strategy side of it is if you think I'm going to pick one of the three or one of the two, one of the four roles from that, that woman, you better, you better snag one. Uh, that's, that's kind of, we got to have some strategy when there's this many people, uh, this, this, this big of a pool. So that's, that's really the only major rule. Um, I do think, uh, you know, we're, we're trying to like pick women from different eras. The idea is that that version of, of that actress, you know, whether it's from 1945 or 2020, you get that version and they are working together almost as like an all-star cast for your movie. So it's very hypothetical. It's very fantasy. Uh, that's kind of what we like to do here with our, with our draft. So uh, you get first pick. You can pick in any of the five uh, roles that you want. Mm-hmm. You don't have to start a team leader. You can start a driver. You can start a safe cracker. Whatever you want to do. And when you're ready, take it away. So I am also only choosing films that I have seen. Just of course, it. right? Yeah, stuff that you care about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So my first, I thought about this a lot. And I had somebody mm-hmm. lined up. But I'm going to go a little off the beaten path. And I'm going to pick a crowd control. Fuck. <laughs> uh Joan Crawford. Damn it. 1945? Mildred Pierce, yes. Yeah, shoot, dude. That's one of the first names I have. Oh, <laughs> uh, damn it. You don't get more brutish and hard to control than Joan Crawford. Uh Joan Crawford, 1945. Yes. Yeah. Joan No Wire Hangers Crawford is kind of like the legendary Hollywood psycho. And her role in Mildred Pierce is so different because she's such a decent human being dealing with crazy fucking situations in that movie. And I can see her kind of snapping and <laughs> joining a, a heist crew like this and being like, you know, I'm going to like just taking out a lot of her internal problems on the crowd. You know, like I can see her like, re- you know, showing up to production with a wire hanger and being like, hey, director what, how can i put the, how can i bring this into the scene <laughs> i want to whip some i want to whip some people some hostages can we do that uh, oh god i love this <laughs> so yeah joan joan crawford mildred pierce this is a movie uh we watched for oscar sunday when we did the last weekend best picture showdown uh we both Loved Mildred Pierce and loved Lost Weekend. Uh, fantastic movies. If you haven't seen Mildred Pierce, uh, do yourself a favor. This is a like knockout, knockout movie from the 40s that uh, we'll, we'll, we'll stick with you. Yeah, I immediately went out and I bought the Criterion Blu-ray because I was like, I want this film around. Oh, God, I love that. Uh, Joan Crawford also, I really wish, um, what's the, that real wacky movie? Um, well, it's more so Betty Davis. And um uh, whatever happened to baby Jane. Yeah. She did not win that year. And I was looking back and I was like, man, I wish I could have her. <laughs> she, Cause she'd be great crowd control. She's fucking nuts. <laughs> uh, I, I, am to this, I am to this day amazed that that movie actually like happened without like some murder. Like the fact that like they hated each other so much and casting them was such a risky fucking endeavor. And it ended up being one of my, you know, one of the most incredible films of both their careers. So, you know, good job playing nice for two hours, ladies. Yeah, no kidding. And those are two. Yeah, that's what, 1962, right? Um, yeah. God, that's a great movie. Yeah, Joan, Joan Crawford's fucking, she's awesome. Uh, she's someone I need to, to watch more shit of because she, uh, she's always blown me away. She's got the, she, it's all on the eyes, Chico. She's got <laughs> really, really mesmerizing eyes, uh, similar to like, to have the same power that like, Humphrey Bogart's eyes have, you know, just kind of like, holy shit. Like I can't, I can't stop looking at you no matter what's going on. So she, yeah, she's great. Mildred Pierce is a great, great pickup. Um, I wrote down like a handful of, I think I wrote down 14 of like my favorites, just kind of like a gen- general pool that I'm picking from. And that's like the third one I wrote down. So uh, <laughs> good, good pick. I definitely was going to take her if you didn't. Oh yeah. I, 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 I thought maybe, but I wasn't sure. But yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, she's all, she's great. All right, so that's your crowd control slash brute Joan Crawford as Mildred Pierce and Mildred Pierce. Um, shit. So I can save my crowd control. Well, not really. You might still take them for something else. Um, fuck. 
Let's see. What, what's what's some strategy here? Okay, I'll also go old school. Um, I'm gonna go. You know, this this also yeah, is again very hypothetical. So bear <laughs> bear with me here. Uh, I'm gonna take Olivia De Havilland, 1949, from The Heiress. Um, love that movie to death. I'm gonna pick her as. I'm gonna use her as my safe cracker. Olivia de Havilland. I love I love this version of Olivia de Havilland. Uh, we both kind of fell in love with her uh, during a stint on Oscar Sunday because of this and what's the 1948 movie she was up for? Um, the Snake Pit. Snake Pit. Yeah, Snake. 1948 is loaded. Like the Best Picture group is fucking sick. Um, and yeah, she she's awesome in that movie. And then and then the year after she wins for the Heiress, which is yeah a movie I I really 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 like. Uh, I have the criterion of that one. So uh, we both, we both, <laughs> we're both picking 40s movies that we both bought right away after watching them uh, for, for Oscar Sunday. I, so funny story about the heiress. This has been happening a lot lately. And actually, thank you for giving me the opportunity to address it on the show. Mm. So our episode of the heiress has a fuck ton of views on YouTube for one. Oh, okay. reason. We keep getting angry people who are upset that it's not the full movie. And who are then commenting, like, why is it just people talking? Where's the movie? And I just want to be clear about this. We have never, ever claimed to be uploading full movies. We are a podcast that talks about movies. That is not our fault that you don't understand that. So stop stop yelling at me about this. That's hilarious. So, I, get, yeah, people, I get one every two or three weeks. That... It, with that specific movie or specifically just that movie the heiress so people are seeking that movie out that's that's yeah. great and, I, I'm, do like and that. I'm i'm ruining their day because our conversation about it isn't nearly <laughs> as good as the movie itself apparently uh well no no i i don't think so either because the movie <laughs> fucking rules but yeah i mean <laughs> jesus christ it uh, it doesn't say uh the heiress 1949 full movie like no. that's what it says on you on youtube it'll say that you know in the episode uh, you, and I, you and i know in the episode description, it says it's a podcast. Like it's yeah, it's very obvious. So I I hold zero accountability for that mistake. God, people just want that William Wyler. I feel like this is a accessible movie. Why are they? I don't know. Like, I don't know. Admittedly, whatever. like in, in if I own the movie or I know someone who has access to it, I never bother looking to see if it's available because I don't need to. Yeah, true, true. Yeah. Yeah, this is this is a great one, man. This is a criterion that comes with this beautiful poster uh of Olivia that I have that I'm like, oh man, like I don't know what to do with it. Like, should I put that bad boy up? But um <laughs> I just I, I don't want to like mess it up, you know. It's one of those things that I, I I hold I hold dearly. I love that some dudes have like Playboy pinup posters and but you you've got Olivia de Havilland in the heiress. I love that. <laughs> yeah <laughs> olivia de havilland who's who's fucking you know going toe-to-toe -to -toe with montgomery clift yeah uh <laughs> and a 40s movie i love this we both picked 40s movies to start that's uh that's good stuff and, you know these are movies that we fell in love with because of the podcast so it feels like you know a full circle moment so yeah i'm sticking with olivia de havilland as Catherine sloper in the heiress uh, 1949 as my safe cracker so back to you yeah that character's a good pick i love her emotional arc in that movie going from kind of fragile lovelorn heiress to you know boss bitch who stands up for herself it's a good it's a good arc that her just like cliff just banging on the door and her just ignoring him is Gosh. one of the best fucking endings i've seen from that era it's just so ah it's beautiful to watch you know the dickheads get theirs in an era where that you know it happened but not usually to that effect yeah she just you know in the snake pit as well she's just like way ahead of her time you know uh with her her expressions her mannerisms so uh she's someone i've like fallen in love with Be again like we have to like give thanks to the show providing that for us yeah um uh, by going out on a limb and picking some old movies we were rewarded you know hand over fist by performances like crawford or de havilland or all the burt lancaster shit we watched james stewart you know mm -hmm. different people that we different people that it kind of like rejuvenated our love for for that era of film so um i'm always grateful for that yeah i'm picking my next pick is uh another thing i got out of the show um the only person i would i would trust to lead this heist 
to put all these ladies in check and understand that they have to fight for something they believe in. And that is Sally Field in Norma Ray. 1979, baby. Yes. God damn. I didn't really appreciate Sally Field until I saw this movie. And I am I was blown away by how much I fucking loved her and her conviction. And just her leading that that, you know, union vote was was so powerful and unforgettable and visceral, especially when they just started dismantling her life to get her to shut the fuck up. And she would not shut the fuck up. I I'd follow that lady into hell. So I want her leading my heist. I love I love this pick. Yeah, definitely someone it's on my list as well. Um, <laughs> Sally Field, Sally Field, one of the uh, two time winners. She also won for Places in the Heart, nineteen eighty four. Uh, yeah, do not like that movie or performance nearly as much as Norma Ray. And that's not really a diss to Places in the Heart. It's it's Norma Ray is so good. Um, this is a movie we watched on our very first Best Picture show now, nineteen seventy nine. Uh, Kramer, Kramer versus Kramer won that year, beating um, all that jazz, Apocalypse Now, Norma Ray, and Breaking Away. Like, really good year overall. So, uh, yeah, great pick. <laughs> Damn. Yeah, that was a great episode. That was a great bunch of movies, uh, especially Breaking Away. I had no expectations for that, and I, th- I thought it was fantastic. Yeah, it's a like, wonderful coming of age movie that, yeah, is, uh, yeah I, I, I think more people need to see it. Yeah, for sure. I do. I miss Oscar Sunday. For these conversations, right? Yeah. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> no, I, I hear. I hear you, man. It's it's uh, something I think about all the time, just because it it challenged us, man, and really forced us to like go into places with context, but also, you know, challenge us. And I, I, I loved it. I had so much fun. It 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 creates episodes like this. Otherwise, we wouldn't be able to do this. So, um, true. A, a lot of these movies we're going to talk about already. The first three are movies we 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 can watch because of Oscar Sunday. Um, let's see. All right, Sally Field. Yeah, I was thinking about her. She'd be a great team leader, especially that version. You know, <laughs> um, Norma Ray. You know what I'm going to do though? I'm also going to take a team leader here. I'm going to take someone who I think is even keeled. Uh, someone who is uh, just on her in her own right is a dominant dominant actress. Uh, but I, I like how cool calm and collected she is but at the same time she gets shit done and that is miss francis mcdormand 1996 fargo and yeah i knew i i knew you were gonna get francis yeah she's she's lights out dude you know that she's a three-time winner if someone's going to equal Catherine hepburn's four it's gonna be francis mcdormand uh she's she's won two in the past you know now seven years for three billboards outside of missouri and nomadland uh, she also has, you know, she has that nomination for Almost Famous and something else. Uh, North Country. Like the mid- yeah, with uh, Charlize Theron. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, um, so, yeah, she's she's no slouch when it comes to the Oscars. She's an absolute dynamite performer. And Fargo is a fantastic movie. Uh, I didn't discover this. Obviously, I'd seen this many times before. But when we did it on Oscar Sunday, this was, I, I, st- I remember this like the back of my hand. So... When we did Fargo, it was in February of 2021, and it was when that big like um, winter storm happened. Where like like Texas like Texas like lost power, Mm -hmm. Um, and you and I were kind of like fuck. Like when are we going to do this episode? Because we you know we couldn't really do anything. So I remember when we finally got power back in my apartment. I went. I like kept going back every day to see because I was staying with my dad. I'd go back to our apartment to see. And when I saw it was working, I was like, dude, like now's the time. <laughs> like, we got, we got, we got to fucking do Fargo. But I also had just watched uh, Nomad Land because it came out on Hulu uh, early on in 2021. So like I was just like in a Francis McDormand state of mind. And I don't know what it was. I just watched Fargo way closer than I had ever watched Fargo. And I remember talking about how I moved it up from a four star to a four and a half star on Letterboxd and from like an eight to a nine on the filmgasm scale. And I, that's because of again the podcast forcing me to watch it more seriously, and I'm always grateful for that. Yeah, that's I love discovering new things, but I also love how watching familiar stuff in this new mindset has made me appreciate so much that I already love 
in a fresh, original way, which was something I did not expect when we started the podcast. No, right? Yeah. Yeah, we've yeah, we've grown so much. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> yeah. I, I you know, my first the first episode I ever did was was me talking to the wall with the shining, nervous and stumbling over my words and not realizing I could just erase anything that makes me sound like a fool. Just, <laughs> yeah, just like I felt I, I felt like I was, you know, fucking live on on XM radio, but I'm I'm not. I'm I've I've cut so much since then. But uh hell yeah. You know, here we are five years in and we are, you know, completely different people, very like evolved and aware of why we're doing this. And it's I'm I'm so grateful. Yeah, dude, it's it's the best. It's so rewarding. And then this is kind of like the icing on the cake is doing stuff like this where we just get to kind of fucking rattle around and talk about different things. And, you know, so far we've got you got Joan Crawford and Sally Field. I have Olivia de Havilland and Francis McDormand. Uh, and you have your third pick coming up right now. I'm going to pick a, uh, a tech person. And uh, yet, yet another movie that uh, I discovered uh, via Shit. the podcast. I, I'm wondering if you do you do you think you know where I'm going? I, I do. And I, yeah, I do. Well, let's see. Uh, Marley Matlin, <laughs> Children of a Lesser yes! God. Yes. Oh, my God. <laughs> How did you fucking know that? Because because I was going to pick her because she'd be cool because she's fucking deaf, but she can still hack. <laughs> <laughs> and that movie rules. <laughs> God damn it. Wow. Oh, shit. <laughs> oh, yeah. I should have. That, per- that performance, that movie, I uh, Platoon was great, okay? But Children of a Lesser God got under my skin and stayed there, and that film should have won Best Picture that year. 86. What else was in that group? I want to say Room with a View. Yeah, yeah, no. Uh, um, uh, the Mission and yeah, yeah. Hannah and her sisters. So Yeah, yeah that's not a great group. Yeah, uh, it's Platoon versus Lesser God. <laughs> yeah, you know, I do. I love Platoon, but I think I'm with you as far as like, I feel like Children of Lesser God, I mean, fuck, first off, William Hurt. Uh, him and, him and uh, Marley Mar- Matlin are just perfect together so uh yeah I, I can't really argue with that as far as that five I, I i think i'm with you and i just you know what a what a challenging role you know as a deaf actor to as a deaf actor in a hearing person's world you know it's it's got to be just constant you're constantly on edge not sure if you're doing things right if you know i mean it's it's hard to comprehend and her performance in that movie is so visceral and real that you just, you, you fall in love with her. I mean, first off, she's gorgeous and uh, yeah, bre- breathtaking. Yeah. Secondly, she's just such an independent free spirit that refuses to let anything, including her disability, keep her from living a life all her own. And that is just such a powerful character to get behind. And then to see her win and, you know, become an inspiration to deaf actors around the world. And then later, like, you know, Troy Kotzer and Coda got to work with Marley Matlin and, you know, openly said that like she was his hero. <laughs> like what, a what I, I fucking love that, that full circle shit where it's just, you know, her, her role, her performance inspired him who then became an Oscar winner and he's going to inspire somebody else. And the, the buck just keeps rolling. That's right. I love that shit. So yeah, Marley Matlin's on my team. <laughs> uh, another reason why this shit matters. Yeah. So good, good, Good shout out. God, I can't believe that. <laughs> fucking you you fucking know me so well, dude. It's 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 crazy. Uh, I see I I knew I knew Sally Field was going to pop up. I didn't I Joan Crawford I wondered, you know, I was like I I knew you loved that movie as well. But Matlin, god, I should have known. Like I should have just picked her. That's my <laughs> fault. I thought about her for a hacker or driver as kind of a shout out to Baby Driver cuz his character hmm. has weird has weird hearing. So Marley Matlin, like that, like young Marley Matlin, fucking like driving like badass cars would be so cool. <laughs> oh man, yeah. This no, this is great. Yeah. Um man, I I love that movie. I that's one I, I wanna I wanna go back to just in my own time and you know, like give a give a rewatch. Cause I that was for both of us the first time we had seen that. 
yeah, and I didn't really have you know high expectations that that year. I just been told like, oh, Platoon deserved everything. It's the movie. It's the the amazing war movie, and it it was great. But you know, then I watched Hannah and her sisters and the mission and Room with a View, and I was yeah. like, got another fucking you know stinker year. And then Children of a Lesser God was like this amazing. Yeah, hold on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. amazing drama about you know what love truly means and how sometimes it's not enough it was just it was a very strong movie man <laughs> i agree i do i do think you know who 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 marley matlin beat that i think you would have uh you would have been like cool if she would have won as well as a uh, sigourney weaver and aliens <laughs> well Fuck yeah, yeah. <laughs> what, a, to, what yeah. a cool like action performance to be up for an oscar that's great yeah, I'm just happy that that even got considered for that she got considered for that. That Ellen Ripley has an Oscar nomination. That's yeah. happy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I want my team leader to be fucking Ripley. You know, <laughs> come on. <laughs> uh, that, that good pick, dude. You've yeah, you've you definitely swiped some some people. Uh, luckily, we have a bunch of other people to pick from. <laughs> uh, let's see. Okay, crowd control, brute. Oh, this is hard, man. I have this. I love all these people. Um, I'll do. I'm going to go straight from the heart here. One of my probably my favorite actress of all time. Yep. I'm going to pick her. I'm going to pick her for Hacker as well. Uh, that's Jane Fonda. Uh, 1971. Clute. She's uh, also got the win for Coming Home, which I also idolize. But uh, Clute is just such a unique film. She's amazing in it alongside uh donald sutherland and yeah I, I i love this movie i love her in it young young jane fonda as a hacker would be would be a lot of fun yeah i knew i knew jane was gonna was gonna pop up here at some point i i i saved her because i knew you 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 you, <laughs> you you deserved to have jane fonda on your dude dude she's 86 years old and jesus I'm I'm like i'm like man how much longer like you know some of these obviously we've lost so many legends but I'm just like, I'm always wondering, like the dark, you know, kind of morbid part of my mind is always like, well, there, there still is so many other amazing people from that generation that are still here. And I'm like, I mean, it's just a matter of time, dude. It fucking yeah. sucks. Yeah. Yeah. That's a sh- I try not to think about that because it's just, you know, I, I, it's I, inevitable. I can't help it, dude. I, I, yeah. More it's inevitable. morbid shit. Gonna happen. I try not to wallow in that. I try to just, you know, take them as they come and just deal with it in the moment. The best, I think that's yeah. the best way to handle that shit. It, it is. I'm just a fucking idiot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, when I was a kid and I found out about the movie Clute, I was reluctant to say it because I thought Clute was a dirty word. It certainly sounds like one, doesn't it? Yeah. It sounds like a euphemism for a vagina in some capacity. Clute. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's great. Yeah. This, that movie rules, man. Uh, that's uh, Alan J. Pakula's. That's his, the first of his. Um, you know, uh, paranoia trilogy. I all three of those movies fucking kick ass. <laughs> I I I personally think that she was. I, if I was going to pick Jane Fonda, I would have picked her coming home role. Um, yeah, that's fair. I'm not, not going to argue that. Yeah, just yeah. just seven years later. Yeah, yeah. That <laughs> Jesus, seventy eight was just the year of the the wounded soldier. Uh that that movie is brutal. Coming home. Um, Got emotional for both of us on that episode. It's, it's uh, yeah, Bruce Dern, man, and John Voight, and and and, and her. Oh, my God, Oof. yeah, that was that was a powerful movie. I love when it's a movie I don't expect to annihilate me. You know, like I I go into certain movies, I'm like, oh, this is gonna make me cry. But sometimes you go in blind, you don't know what to expect, and it turns into an emotional roller coaster that you didn't know you paid for. Yeah, yeah, and you're like, cool, I, you know, buy the ticket, take the ride. I'm cool. I'm, I'm, <laughs> yep. yeah, I love that movie, man. Uh, see, I'm, I'm glad she won for that. Mm-hmm. Uh, she, yeah, she was just something else in the 70s. She's dynamite. Uh, you know what's crazy? As I was watching, uh, I was watching <laughs> 1992 World Series between the Blue Jays and the Braves. <clears throat> yeah, Blue Jays, Braves. It's game six, it's in Atlanta. And Jane Fonda is in the front front row, sitting with her at the time her husband Ted Turner. <laughs> yes, <Yeah>, Turner. <laughs> I was like, oh Jesus! And she looks fucking amazing. You know, it's a uh, ninety-two, and 
she's next to Ted Turner's like quite, I think quite a bit older. No, actually, I think they're, I think they're around the same age. Uh, I don't know. I don't know what he's doing anymore. Is he even alive, Ted Turner? He was. He's been doing shit for so long. He's a you know big big TV guy, uh, producer, or whatever. Uh, TNT, TBS, all that shit. Ted Turner looks like if Edgar the Bug from Men in Black, like ripped <laughs> off the skin of Jr. from Dallas and wore him around. <laughs> like he doesn't look like a human being. He looks like a cro- a giant alien cockroach. Wearing well, what, a human being. Are you looking at a picture right now? Or? Oh yeah. What, which <laughs> yeah. what what what's it from? What uh? Uh, it's Mountain Living. It's like a recent picture. He's eighty five. Oh, okay, so he's the same age as uh Fonda. Yeah, just a year younger. Yeah, he's had some work done. He's very very obviously had some. Work. Oh yeah. Oh my God, this picture is no frightening. Old, no old no eighty five year old has a forehead with no wrinkles. Ted. Yeah. Oh, scary guy. Yeah. Oof. Yeah. I thought that was hilarious. I was like watching the baseball game. And I was like, dude, I'm going to pick her tomorrow <laughs> in our fucking draft. Yeah. Jane Vonda, baby. Shout out to the Blue Jays. They won that game uh, in extra innings and uh, won the World Series. So good shit. Good, good shit, Toronto. Uh, shattering Atlanta's Atlanta's hearts. Uh, okay. So I got Bree Daniels from Clute. That's my third. She's my hacker. Uh, you have two more picks. You need a safe cracker and a driver. Well, I think that Ingrid Bergman and Gaslight would be a great safe cracker. Love this. Yeah, love this. This is I see this is this I saved this for you because I was like, I'm not, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not swiping that. That's your that's your gal. She's my Jane Fonda. Um, <laughs> yeah, she's great. Yeah, and her role in Gaslight is so fantastic. Just this tortured woman told by told by her psycho husband, you're insane. To just so he can steal all her shit. And I think that, you know, bringing that kind of paranoia into a heist is important. And who better than the safe cracker? You know, get the numbers right. Or, and if you don't, they're going to tell you you're crazy. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, it's brilliant. <laughs> yeah. The whole time she's just asking them, like, I'm doing this right. Right. Like, I'm doing a good job. <laughs> and they're like, like hey, sure. Like, Ingrid, shut the fuck up and open the safe. <laughs> Yeah, we don't care. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, what a movie. Another one we watched for Oscar Sunday. Yeah, that was a that was a delight. I I had seen up at that point I had only seen Ingrid Bergman in Casablanca Murder. and I believe Murder on the Orient. Orient. Yeah, Orient Express, that makes sense. Yeah. You know, I we always talk about doing an episode on Casablanca. I haven't seen that in ages. Well, at the time it was, you know, we we would do a show a best picture showdown with like 20 movies. Yeah, that, and that's, that's just, what kept uh, us yeah. from doing Casablanca. <laughs> that's what kept us from a lot of those old ones where, you know, we're so dedicated to knocking out the other nominees. Uh, it just wouldn't feel right, you know, um, if we didn't do all of them. So, yeah, some of those early years where there's just a bunch and they're not accessible. Yeah, it got really difficult. But, uh, but yeah, we did. So all four of the ones you've picked are first time watches <laughs> as for Oscar Sunday. Yeah, yeah, they are. Yeah. Uh, I got it. That's so cool. <laughs> I also have not even touched like the the, the latest I've gone is is the eighties, eighty six. I haven't even touched the the recent years, the, the recent decades. Yeah, I mean, yeah, fuck it. You know, I don't know if I'm going to honestly. <laughs> I might just for for one lady I want, but yeah, I don't know. I don't know though. I might I might stick to past decades. Uh, um, fuck. Let's see. I need a driver and crowd control. Um. I, I, yeah, I want to not because of this role, but because what she's capable of. Um, to me, she's probably the most talented woman we have right now. Uh, there's there's two ladies that I think are like, if I'm going to cast a movie, like I want one of them. One of them is Viola Davis, and the other one is Kate Blanchett. Wow. Uh, she won in 2013 for Blue Jasmine. Um, I've seen what she's capable of, and she is capable of crowd control. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, she, you know, she's, I mean, just, just think about, you know, uh, tar, think about, think about the places she goes for little stretches in Lord of the Rings. Uh, she is capable of just fucking turning on a dime and freaking the shit out of people. So, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to go with her. I want her on my team. I idolize Kate Blanchett. I just think she's dynamite and I, I want one kind of modern person on my team, but yeah, I'm, I'm with you. I like some of the old stuff. So. 
that that is a good pick. Yeah, she's phenomenal. She's one of the most reliable, versatile actors we've got today. And uh, yeah, I, I liked I, Blue Jasmine was good mainly because of her. It's um, yeah, it's fine. She's great, but yeah, it's a fine movie. Yeah, I mean, you know, it was what Woody Allen's like fortieth neurotic person in New York City movie. <laughs> Like I get it, you got problems, Woody. Uh, got it. <laughs> uh, that's that's great. <laughs> if it, quick note, anyone who was surprised about the whole you know banging your not stepdaughter thing, just watch Manhattan. He told us straight up what he was into and what he was going to do. I uh, yeah, no no lies here, no lies uh, detected. Um, totally totally true. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, just I like, you know, in Blue Jasmine, she's this, you know, neurotic, overbearing heiress who loses everything and has to, oh, my God, live slightly upper middle class. And uh, she can't handle it. She can't she can't handle it. <laughs> and just the, no. the manipulation and the crazy level she goes through to try to get any semblance of her rich lifestyle back is just nuts. If any other actress, that character would be unbearable. But Kate Blanchett gives her this like weird spark of humanity that keeps you kind of rooting for her in a weird way. Yeah. She's Blanchett is one of the ladies who is worth watching every single thing she's done because at least she's going to bring the pain. You know, she's at least going to bring some like charisma, some kind of, you know, crazy scene or really, you know, nuance to, to some character. She, she never really phones it in. So I just think she's like great to have in any in any movie. Um and she's uh you know someone who's been nominated multiple times. Uh I want to say let's see obviously the last one was Tar. She, I think she was nominated for Carol. Um yeah, she was nominated for playing Elizabeth. Um both times. I think it's just What? Both times. She Elizabeth yeah. in the Golden Age. She got nominated for both. There you go. And, and then she was also nominated for um uh, that Bob Dylan I'm not there. Uh yep. Yeah, she's yeah, she's just fucking excellent. Very true. Uh yeah, good choice. Good choice there. I my favorite thing about Kate Blanchett is that she doesn't just stay in drama. She goes everywhere. She's done horror, she's done comedy, yep. she's done adventure. She's about to be in Eli Roth's fucking Borderlands movie. Like she just goes where the, you know, goes where the good work is. I love that. I wish more actors were that versatile. Oh yeah, she ain't, she ain't above above shit, man. I mean, she's like to me I thought one of the, like the most unique <clears throat> movies from I think it's 2021 was uh, Nightmare Alley. Oh, um, yeah. I thought she was fucking like frightening in that movie, and some of the shit she does, like it feels like she's doing to Bradley Cooper, obviously his character, but like him as an actor, she's like fucking with him. Like it's, <laughs> you're wa- you're watching someone who's just on a different level, like kind of almost competing. Um, and then I think in Tar from from last year and just like wow i mean i love michelle yo i'm so glad she won but i Kate blanchett and tar is like what the fuck like you're that's like daniel day Lu- daniel day lewis level like insanity in that in that performance uh, jk simmons and in, in whiplash type shit so i yeah i just love her in that movie yeah just such a terrible you know life destroying artist who thinks that they're you know above anyone else's problems and yeah I just, God, if you fucking hate her in that movie, she's such a monster. Yep. She's, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, I want her, I want her on my team, you know, and bl- again, we, we both said, you know, Blue Jasmine's a fine, it's fine. It's, it's worth, worth watching mainly because of her, like you said. Uh, and she did win. So I just want her on my team. You know, I'm, mm-hmm. I'm almost picking, I'm almost picking the women before the movie, if that makes sense. I know. And I'm picking, I'm picking the movie before the women, admittedly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, you also have, Sally Field, who's like one of the most stand-up people. Uh, you got Ingrid Bergman, who is awesome in her time. Marley Matlin, who like, how can you not love her? And Joan Crawford, like one of the most frightening like genre, you know, women of that time. So you also have people who are just fucking cool. Yeah, well, you know, I, I'm one. I'm trying. I'm I'm wrapping it up in my head. Like, what are we? What are they stealing? Like, what does this crew rob? Okay, yeah, we can talk about that at the end for sure. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm thinking that like. Who yeah, because Sally Fields organizing it. Like what would what would Norma Ray want to want to heist? <laughs> <laughs> she, well, she wants to help the people, man. She wants to do right by do right by by the people, no matter what they look like. <laughs> ah. Okay. Uh so I got one more pick. 
Um, <laughs> yeah, fuck. My driver. Well, there is, I think, um, a certain lady who would channel a lot of anger, rage, very real anger and rage into doing this position and would not let any fucking cop take down this, I'm assuming, van. And uh, <laughs> that is Elizabeth Taylor in Who's Afraid mm. of the Wolf. Oh, yes. Oh, love watched, that pick. I watched this for the first time a few weeks ago, and I could not. I don't think I blinked for two, three minutes. It was such an incredible, harrowing relationship drama about two people who clearly fucking despise each other. And it who and who does uh oh, who directed that? Who was that? Um Mike Nichols. Afraid? Yeah. Who does yeah. Mike Nichols cast? A Hollywood couple who very much fucking despises each other. <laughs> Liz and Dick. And that comes Great. out a lot in that movie. Um uh, good. Yeah, good. Yeah. yeah, this is yeah. So I can oh, see man. I can see Martha taking that wheel and putting the pedal to the metal and pulling this shit off and just screaming at her fucking husband the whole time. And they're all like, Martha, are you okay? <laughs> just George, shut the fuck up. I can totally see that happening. Like she just loses it <laughs> as she's <laughs> trying to lose the cops. And they're all like, I think we're going to get out of this, but we should probably say something to her. After this. <laughs> I, I love this. This is a movie. God, I like, I wanted to do an Oscar Sunday so many different times, you know, um, just never, just never got around to it. You know, there's a big list in the back of my head of like, ah, fuck, you know, like yeah. that would have been, re- that would have been really cool to 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 highlight. But here, here we are highlighting it now. I, I love that. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad I watched it. It was, it was an, it's an amazing uh, performance piece and just a great snapshot of like what marriage really like was really like. You know, what, after Leave It to Beaver stopped filming, what did the family really talk about? Mm. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> that's that's great. <laughs> I like I like that a lot. Yeah. Richard Richard Burton, man. Um oof. Yeah, those those two are that's a that's a showcase, like you said. That's a actors an actor's movie. Oh yeah, definitely. Ah, what a great <sighs> fuck. That's your driver. All right, well you're set. That is um, my team. <laughs> and I, I just gotta pick a driver. Um <sighs> this is hard. God, still got a lot of ladies on my list here. I'm trying to think, do I want to, what do I want to do? Huh? Driver. So I got Francis, Kate, Olivia, Jane. Four ladies I love. Got to stick with that. Um, damn. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, fuck. <laughs> this is so hard. I'm gonna I'm gonna go with someone that we both love uh, from a movie we both love. Um, one of the best best picture winning movies of all time, um, and a woman who has has won has won her fair share fair share of awards over the years. Uh, it's Jodie Foster, nineteen ninety one, Sounds of the Lambs. Uh, was, can she she can do everything? Um, I was certain you were about to describe Louise Fletcher, but I love I love Jodie Foster as well. Yeah, I, I like Louise Fletcher, but ugh, fuck, I don't want her on my fucking ice <laughs> team. <laughs> you know, what if you uh, need nurse, medical attention? Nurse Ratchet. Oh uh, yeah, whatever. You know, we'll be fine. Uh, Kate Blanchett can just scream at them until they toughen up. Uh, yeah, I, I want I want Jody because yeah, I I think she's capable of anything. I think she could be the team leader, crowd control, safe cracker, driver. Ha- I think she could do anything. Uh, and I think her being in a movie, she's proven over like time and time again. She's very, very good at leading movies. She's also very good at being a supporting um, supporting character and lifting other people up in the right time. So I think casting her in any project is is just smart. I agree. She's an incredible actress. Uh, fun fact, uh, Colton recently watched uh, the Hannibal Lecter films for the first time. It was giving me a play-by-play. And uh, he... <laughs> Yeah, it was it was funny. Like he watched Lambs and he watched Hannibal, and he was asking me like, "Well, why don't people like this?" And I'm like, "Well, Julianne Moore, that's why." And it, yeah, they're not as good. No, but it's just <laughs> it's, it's astonishing to me that like watching Silence of the Lambs for the first time at our age is like, wow, what a what an experience. And uh, yeah, I, I mean, I can't even fathom uh, that. <laughs> that was after he watched Boogie Nights for the first time. So he he's been he's been really just going for it um 
That's got nothing to do with the show, by the way. He's just doing that. <laughs> well, because you should. <laughs> yeah, as you, yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh. <laughs> yeah. Jodie Foster as Clarice Starling is, you know, such a heroic counterpoint to all the sick sons of bitches in that movie. Uh, and she's just doing her best to hold her shit together. That's that's what she's doing that whole movie. You know, she's putting on a brave face. We finally see her kind of break at the end when she has to face Bill. But the whole movie, she's just trying not to be seen as a as the you know quote unquote weak woman. Mm. And there's a lot of overcompensating happening because of because of that. And you know, Lecter sees through that and mocks her for it. And their relationship is so unique and bizarre and hard to quantify. And at the end of the movie, you're still not sure. Like you're like, what the hell was there? Like what were they? You know, it's, it's hard to, yeah. it's hard to explain, but you kind of get it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. God. I mean, this is, so we did, when did we, we did Silence of the Lambs. We did a, we did a uh, best picture show now on that one. Yeah. We made a, watch Prince of Tides. That's right. Prince of Tides. Pretty good. Nick Nolte. <laughs> uh, <laughs> pretty, pretty good. Yeah. And uh, Barbara strikes hand for strikes hand. Yeah. That's uh, <laughs> I like I like that one. Um, Obviously, Beauty and the Beast and JFK and Bugsy's okay. It's like it's a good group. Yeah, it is, and I'd argue Prince of Tides exceptionally way more horrifying than Silence of the Lambs. Like for for, for fans like you and I, I, I think that's true. Yeah, yeah. I didn't see <laughs> yeah. that shit coming. Tell you that right now. Uh, mm, hell no, hell yeah. no. That scene. Even Caleb was like, "Yo, <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck was that scene?" Yeah. Ooh. Yeah, Prince of Tides is great, but buckle up, man, if you're gonna go down that road. That road, yeah. I assume anybody who's listening has seen Silence of Lambs. Don't really need to go to bat for for Jodie Foster. She's just fucking awesome. Everyone knows it. She's a two time um, Best Actress winner, so we could have chosen her for The Accused or Silence of Lambs. She's also up for Taxi Driver, of course, for supporting uh, Nell um, for lead actress, and then she's up again for supporting this year and Nyad. So good resume. She rules. She's kind of like um, back in the the main conversation because she's a true detective. So love mm. that for her. Love that for her. I am never watching The Accused again. That is one of the most disturbing films I've ever seen. Yeah, man. But she was great. She was amazing. But fuck it, hell, that got way too real. I I couldn't. I couldn't. Like, I, yeah. Good God. Yeah. Yeah. She's yeah, dude. She's a. She's fucking excellent in that in that movie. But yeah, I definitely would want to choose like more of the fan favorite. Uh, <laughs> uh, but it, it really is the same version of her, right? You know, it's 1989 or 1988 and 1991. Uh, so you know, you're basically getting that same version of Jodie Foster for 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 this movie. Okay, so we're, we're done picking our, our ladies here, and of course, you know, we have honorable mention and whatnot. But before we maybe name a few honorable mentions, let's uh let's do a recap. You have Sally Field. Uh, as Norma Ray in Norma Ray, 1979, as your team leader. You have Joan Crawford as Mildred Pierce in Mildred Pierce from 1945. As your crowd control, you have Ingrid Bergman as Paula Alquist in Gaslight from 1944. She's your safecracker. Uh, you have Elizabeth Taylor as Martha in Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf, 1966. That's your driver. Uh, and then Marley Matlin uh, as Sarah in Children of a Lesser God, 1986. She's your hacker. I have Francis McDormand as Marge Gunderson in Fargo, 1996, as my team leader. I have Kate Blanchett as Jasmine in Blue Jasmine, 2013, as my crowd control. Uh, I have Olivia de Havilland as Catherine Sloper in The Heiress, 1949. She's my safe cracker. And then I have Jodie Foster as Clarice Starling, Sounds of the Lambs, 1991. She's my driver. And then I have Jane Fonda. 1971 as Bree Daniels and Clute as my hacker. So those are great. Now, if you had to kind of, you know, give this a, a, you know, a brief plot, what, what, what are you going with? Oh, <laughs> uh, well, um, I think that Sally field is going to want to organize some kind of, I think, well, Norma Ray is going to want to organize a, <laughs> Kind of a Robin Hood situation, you know, rob the rich, give to the poor kind of thing. And I think what better place to rob than the Ted Turner estate? So we're going to, yes, we're going to organize a heist on Ted Turner's mansion, wherever he lives. Hopefully he's got like some kind of safe room full of cash. And uh, we're all going to 
We're going to take that shit away, and we're going to distribute it to the people of wherever Norma Ray took place. <laughs> That's great. Ted Turner comes back. Uh, <laughs> Jesus Christ. Oh, I love that so much. Obviously, there's no way to uh, put a year when this was made because, you know, your team ranges from 1944 to 1986. My team ranges from 1949 to 2013. So, yeah, even more impossible. Uh, well, it's all, about, case, the hypo- it's all want, about the hypotheticals. In that case, I want Sidney Lumet to direct this. Oh, man. Yeah. If you can just get anybody. Yeah, if I can get it. If, between 44 and 86. To me, it's like anybody in that range of filmmakers counts. <laughs> okay, I see. I see what you're saying here. I like that a lot. Um, yeah, I feel like my team, you know, it's Francis McDormand at the helm in Fargo. I feel like this is, uh, you know, obviously she's a cop in Fargo. This time she's turned, she's, she's, she's broke bad. <laughs> <laughs> she, she, she wants to lead heist teams now and she's, uh, you know, she's, she's, Attacking the, the the north north part of the country in North Dakota, South Dakota, Minnesota, and she's leading a team of uh, midwestern ladies to to dominate that area of, of banks, similar to Hell or High Water, maybe where they just kind of run through that whole area. And uh, man, the director is like, is your, yeah, I mean, I go from forty nine to two thousand thirteen. That's a, a huge huge gap of of you know film history <laughs> uh but i kind of want it to be a woman because you know we're talking about women here oh yeah that's true but you know you know when you're going to those old school ones there's not a lot of you know ladies to call back to but if i can you know do any year of, of all of these i'm probably gonna go <sighs> let her kind of stretch 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 a little bit you know she did a lot of documentary she did a lot of foreign films but why not have fucking Agnes Varda at the helm? The the goat of wow. of women women directors. It, that is an interesting movie, especially since like in, if we're talking characters, you have two cops, two spoiled heiresses, and a prostitute. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, I have yeah Clarice Starling, who's like a very impressive cop. <laughs> like, yeah, uh, and, and Marge, who's like this small town like who don't you know she's fucking pregnant. So yeah, if I'm if I'm if we're going off of the characters, my team's fucked. <laughs> I mean, you got Marge Gunderson leading it. You got Clarice, you know, driving the van. So I, I think between those two, you know, in, in inherent leaders, I think you're going to be fine. Yeah, but they're so like those characters are so good and like are so good at like de- detecting right from wrong that they'd be like, this is all wrong. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, yeah, it's, it, it's got to be based on the the actresses. Yeah. That's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Jane Fonda is the hacker. She's like, yeah, she's like, I, I saw, you know, my side job is, uh, yeah, it's uh, escort, you know, <laughs> that's, that's, what I, that's what I do in my spare time. But really, I love computers. <laughs> I can see Jane Fonda, like, leading the idea to rob the Turner estate and then, like, hiring my squad as, like, the de- the decoy. Oh, that'd be sick. If these teams, like, if they teamed up. Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah, yeah. that'd be, that'd be great. Yeah. Fon- Fonda's I mean. I mean, <laughs> I mean, I mean, if these five, both of our teams, if these, this version of these five ladies were in the same movie, are, I mean, are you kidding me? That would be the craziest poster of all time. <laughs> like, because these are like peak version of all of these women at their best, you know, Oscar winners and just, you know, and even, even without the Oscars in their own right, just fucking dominant, dominant performers. So these would be, these would be movies I'd see. <laughs> If there is a heaven, this is what the films look like up there. You're right. Yeah, they're just casted just yeah. with these it, these it, mega stars. Yeah. Actors and filmmakers and composers from the entire spectrum of not just film, but like you could get fucking Mozart to compose your score. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> Leonard Bernstein. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> totally. They could, they could, you know, uh, collab- collaborate. Oh, God, that'd be just wonderful. I love it. I love doing shit like this just because the, you know, the hypothetical is the best part. Um, when we did best supporting actor, we only did 21st century. Mm. So it felt, it felt very like feasible. You know, it was yeah. like Morgan Freeman and JK Simmons. It's like, okay, well that's possible. You know, it's like actually possible. These are very hard to wrap your head around, which is almost more fun. Yeah. I love the abstract idea of Ingrid Bergman and Marley Matlin starring in the same movie. Like that's just, that's delightful yeah. to think about. 
roles that are 42 years apart, but they're in the same movie. Uh, yeah, that's that's beautiful. Yeah. Marley Matlin is my favorite pick of the whole thing. I'll say that. <laughs> yeah, mine too. Yeah, I just I, I should. I almost took her first just because I was like, I, I can't let this slip. But <laughs> she, she'd be she'd be so cool in a heist movie, man, as, as really the driver, safe cracker or hacker. You know, she'd be so cool. as kind of like a utility utility uh character and yeah she she was great at that time and it was cool seeing her in in coda but man seeing her kind of in her prime is is like so necessary i'll still i'll still go to bat for coda i really liked coda yeah i'm not yeah i'm not crazy about have you gone back and watched it since it won no but i've got a fuck ton of movies to watch so you know (laughs) that doesn't mean i didn't like it you know you know we did do though we both rewatched everything ever all at once like immediately for an episode uh maybe that's why maybe we need to do coda as an episode <laughs> i'd be down to do you know a bo- like a best picture showdown of that year as a bonus to kind of revisit those films i think that'd be really fun yeah i mean i've already seen licorice pizza like 10 times so you know where my vote's going you know? <laughs> <laughs> i don't really want to watch rewatch king richard like i don't really like oh. want to go down that like path <laughs> you know uh. <laughs> it would be nice to talk about you know the films of that year because nobody fucking did ever again after the slap yeah so power of the dog um drive my car uh, uh you you really liked um belfast is that right yeah yeah um dune, dune. um I, I know i'm forgetting a couple i can't can't remember I got you. Uh, let me let me let, let's see. So, Liquor's Pizza, Belfast, Coda. Don't Dune. look up. Ah, oh God, don't look up. I did Nightmare not like Alley. that one. Uh, oh yeah, love Nightmare Alley and West Side Story. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> not, not, yeah the more yeah, we're talking not, about it, the more I'm like, maybe we don't have to do this. <laughs> it's it's like half and half. I like I I really really enjoy you know of course Liquor's Pizza for just you know it's it's just the best. But like Drive My Car is great. Um, I really, really liked Nightmare Alley. I'm not, I'm not, I don't hate any of those, I guess, is what I'm trying to say. I don't, they're not like bad. Uh, I didn't really, for me, like Power of the Dog and Nightmare Alley were not what I expected or really wanted. And West Side Story was like, eh, it's was fine. Okay. It was good. I liked it better than the original because there were actual Puerto Ricans in this one. Yeah, for sure. The representation was, was much better. Yeah. But uh, yeah, no, I feel like if you if you gave Nightmare Alley another go, I think you'd you'd like it now that you kind of know what to expect. Yeah, you're probably right. Fucking cool, like really cool cast. And yeah, I just I just thought it was a great idea. Uh, I, I love that movie. You know, considering how weird that movie is, I would be willing to concede it as one of the four corners that might qualify for a Wednesday episode. Oh, yeah. And then we could watch the original. Yeah, that'd be sick. Yeah. Keep that in mind. <laughs> Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I really like that one. Um, yeah, no, yeah, I'm I'm always down to the, these like showdowns and different discussions about certain like Oscar shows are, are always worthwhile because it's fun to rewatch stuff, revisit it, and uh, you you always you either submit your thoughts on it or you change it a little bit. Like you know, that's the worst that can happen. <laughs> yeah, always try to be malleable. You know, open yourself up to new information or new experiences. I don't think you should ever just shut yourself off and be like, I don't like that, and just end the conversation there. Oh yeah, you know, there are certain films that are gonna, you know, your mind, your your mind's not gonna change, but you know, you should give it the opportunity to try and change it. Yeah, yeah, I totally agree. And you know what? We got a chance to do that next week. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're doing we're we're gonna do a showdown next week, and I'll, I'll talk about that a little bit more after we do some honorable mentions of some uh, best best lead actress wins. So so for me, I, we talk about Michelle Yeoh, like that would she'd be awesome on a heist team. Um. Olivia Coleman from The Favorite. <laughs> I just think Olivia. I just think Olivia Coleman fucking kicks ass. It would be a really fun heist um, team member. Uh, someone else I had written down that I thought one of us would would bring up is Charlize Theron in Monster. Because oh. uh, Charlize Theron is just built for like any kind of movie, same way like Kate Blanchett is. Um, and then I had Julia Roberts because we both love Aaron Brockovich, and of course Julia Roberts is no slouch to um, you know all kinds of movies, including some heist stuff. So. Um and I think that's all I had really written down as backups. Oh, and Halle Berry, two thousand one, um, Monsters Ball. 
Mm. Um, yeah, I wanted to kind of stay away. I, I don't. I, I, yeah, I wanted to stay away from actresses who have like been in heist movies. That's fair. Yeah, that's fair. Charlie um, Theron. Yeah, Charlie <laughs> Theron, Italian Job. You know, Kate Blanchett, Ocean's Eight, Julia Roberts, the other Ocean's movies. So yeah, just, I don't count. I, I don't really count Ocean's Eight. I, I just like <laughs> God. That came and went. <laughs> yeah, and I don't really like Julia Roberts that much anyway. I I'm not a huge fan, but Aaron Brockovich, she is fucking sick in that movie. Yeah, fair enough. Um, I'm surprised neither of us picked Catherine Hepburn. Yeah, you know, I just didn't know what to choose. I yeah, yeah, I guess I I haven't seen her um her first her first win uh, Morning Glory or her third win uh, The Lion in Winter. Or was that her second one? That was her second. Uh, second, yeah, yeah. So I haven't seen those two yet. So I would be going off of Guess Who's Coming to Dinner and on Golden Pond, and I do not want a 70, 80 year old woman on my heist. That, yeah, that's totally fair. Um, yeah, on Golden Pond, Catherine. <laughs> yeah, she's not gonna be able to help anybody. <laughs> like, she's gonna uh, be. Angry. <laughs> I'm also like I like on Golden Pond, but I'm like kind of a. Uh, I'm real biased towards Atlantic City from that year. I thought Susan Sarandon mm-hmm. should have won. Yeah. Uh, I thought that would have been like a really unique, unique win. Now, I did struggle with Meryl Streep, 1982, uh, Sophie's Choice. Obviously, I'm not picking that character, but I think at that time, mm-hmm. late 70s, early 80s, Meryl Streep is like fucking A. Cast her if you can. Yeah. See, to me, it's more fun if I picture the character. So, like, Sophie would be useless on, on this trip. Extremely. <laughs> uh, I I I consider Julie Andrews uh, Mary Poppins. Uh, huh? What would you pick her for? Uh, safe cracker because she could just you know, <laughs> yeah, oh, oh, you know, pour a spoonful of sugar in the locking mechanism and suddenly you know the thing swings open. <laughs> oh, oh, that's great. What about Kathy Bates? Misery. Ah, uh, yeah, I definitely considered Kathy Bates. Uh, she has crowd control written all over her. Uh, yeah yeah i thought you would pick her for crowd control just because she's yeah she's literally frightening in that movie yeah i wouldn't screw with her if i you know if if annie wilkes was robbing a place and told me you know stay on the ground dirty birdie i'm not moving (laughs) (laughs) dirty birdie oh it's wonderful oh my god (laughs) um (laughs) uh let's see um jessica chastain popped into my head yeah, I, yeah, but I love her. But if we're going off of the character thing, I'm like, ah, eh, I don't know. Yeah, I don't need Tammy Faye Baker to bless this heist. I'm good. I don't, and I don't want that makeup just like fucking running all over my fucking. <laughs> you know, we're gonna be sweating. We're gonna be wearing ski masks and <laughs> shit. I don't need all that. <laughs> but I, but Jessica Chastain, mm-hmm. like right now, oh hell yeah, like give yeah all day. She's amazing. Yeah. Uh, I also I thought about Brie Larson. That that, yep, totally, totally thought about that. Young, you know, I think she was like twenty eight or something like that. Yeah, she wins that. Yeah, she would be a great, you know, really any role. She could she could figure that out. Brie Larson's awesome. Yeah, that movie was so fucking disturbing. Yeah, uh, yeah. Really? I haven't really. I've only seen it twice. I saw it in theaters and I saw it maybe a few years after that. I haven't watched it since because I just like I don't know. I don't really want to, even though it's pretty good. Some of the uh, older actresses I, I considered, uh, Jane Wyman in Johnny Belinda. I, yeah, I figured you were going to shout her out. You love that movie. It was such a a surprise. I was not expecting a movie from the 40s to go that dark. And just, yeah, it was, it was so ahead of its time. That, again, that year just was so important to the future of cinema. There's so many films in there that needed to happen. Yeah, well, so, okay, it's Johnny Belinda, Snake Pit, Treasure of the Sierra Madre, Red Shoes, and Buck. Uh, oh, a Hamlet, Hamlet, duh. Ham- yeah, the winner, the fucking... The yeah. shitty one, the shitty yeah. one of the group, so, yeah. I have thought about those other four movies all the time. I have given barely any thought to Hamlet. <laughs> uh, yeah, dude, that, oh my god, that those other four movies are so fucking good the red shoes is like way too good like I, it's it, it's one I, I i do it's another another one that we we discovered through the show mm-hmm. and i was like damn we should have done an episode on that one that would have been a really cool standalone 
red shoes episode would have been really, really rewarding. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I thought I, I thought I was gonna hate that one, you know, it's a long ass. Me, movie yeah, I thought we both were gonna be like, eh, whatever. But no, yeah. it's like fucking incredible. Mm-hmm. Um, and then um, uh, Joan Fontaine, suspicion. Mm. Nice call. I forgot about that one. Good call. It would have been fucking beautiful for you to pick Olivia and for me to pick Joan because that rivalry is legendary in Hollywood. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah, dude. Oh, yeah, good shout. Yeah. Suspicion is such a cool movie. It does so much with so little. And you, you at the end of it, you still don't really know if Cary Grant was really trying to kill her. I love how how ambiguous that movie is. And she's just fantastic because she's at her wit's end thinking, is my husband trying to kill me for the insurance money? But she can't prove it. And he's like, no. But then he does some suspicious shit. And she's like, yeah, he is trying to kill. Her. It's such a fucking harrowing, intense movie. <laughs> Yeah, dude, and she's she's nominated um, like a bunch in that that area right there. Mm-hmm. Uh, in like the early '40s, she was nominated for Rebecca the year before. Ah, uh, and then two years later, she was nominated for the Constant Nymph. Uh, so yeah, th- three nominations in four years. It's like fuck yeah, so cool. Yeah, and you know, I bet you know her beef with her sister Olivia De Havilland. I'm sure just made both of them try extra fucking hard to stand out. And deliver expert performances. So, you know, I'm glad that I don't know what started that, but I'm glad with what we got out of it. So, okay. So, yeah, to tag off that, Olivia de Havilland, a few years later, 1947, sorry, 1946, she wins for To Each His Own. Um, And then she's nominated for The Snake Pit two years later. And then a year later, The Heiress, 1949, she wins. So, three nominations, two wins in four years. (laughs) Holy (laughs) fuck. They were clearly competing yeah yeah i i love the trace like what what started that shit i'm gonna i'm gonna go ahead and look that up well here's the thing is we need to do an episode (laughs) where we watch like their oscar nominated and oscar winning roles and kind of do an episode on them too that would be so sick that's that's a great bonus episode yeah i'm i'm willing to like set that for like far in the, the 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 future that way, we have plenty of time to find the movies and watch them. And I'm yeah, looking here right so now. Cool. Apparently, what started all this uh, was was physical violence as in in childhood. So, just from the get go, they just did not fucking like each other. Man, they were born 15 Hell. years apart. God, dude. Yeah. <laughs> At the age of nine, Joan decided she would kill her sister. Like that's a quote from this article. Jesus. Like, <laughs> She thought it out carefully. She would let Olivia hit her once and then again in silence. But after the third blow, she would plug Olivia between the eyes. Obviously, she didn't through with it. Holy hell. This was this was not just a sibling rivalry. This was a legitimate psychotic hatred. <laughs> Fucking A, dude. Right? Oh God. Goddamn. Uh, <laughs> that's amazing, though. Like, what the shit? Oh yeah, now it makes me want to watch their movies like yeah. even more. So I, I totally oh. want to do an, an exploratory Fuck. rivalry podcast. I think that would be awesome. Okay, yeah, let's definitely talk about that when we're done here. Um, okay, so I, I mentioned next week uh, we're getting close to the actual Oscars. Uh, you know, ninety six Academy Awards are just around the corner. We only have a couple more of these, uh, you know, Oscar based episodes for this bonus run. Uh, and next week, I'm like, I am so stoked because we're throwing it back to like a proper Oscar Sunday, uh, Best Picture Showdown, and we're doing the movies from 1974 because they're uh, hitting their 50th anniversary this year, and because it's a fucking amazing group of movies. No weak link. These all of these movies rule. We have uh, the winner, Godfather Part Two. We have uh, Towering Inferno, Chinatown. Uh, the conversation and why am I blanking on the oh and Lenny like these movies rule they're so good the seventies have the best uh, like groups of best picture nominees and nineteen seventy four has an argument to be one of the best ever I'm so stoked to first off revisit all of them because both of us have seen all five of them yeah. um, and in some cases multiple times and so we're going to be revisiting all of them and doing a showdown ranking them. Uh, five, five to one. We'll like do like a countdown. Uh, that's like what we used to do back in the day, you know, on, on, um, 
those showdowns that we did every fifth episode on Oscar Sunday. So it'd be really cool to throw it back to something that we are very familiar with, but a year that we've never done. So I, I cannot wait for next week. <laughs> yeah, this was such a cool idea. And it'll be really fun to to, to do this again, uh, especially with those films. Oh, dude, yeah. yeah. And they're they're all on something. So Godfather Part 2 is on Paramount Plus. Um, Chinatown's on Netflix and Paramount Plus. Um, Lenny is on Tubi. Um, the conversations on Netflix and Towering Inferno, you unfortunately is the one that you have to rent. Yeah, but, but come on, it's worth it. <laughs> it really is. It's long. It's like two and a half hours, but it is worth it. Great movie. You got some fucking like lights out performers in that movie, and it's just really unique. It's like a disaster movie, but like fucking Paul Newman, and, you know, he's just at the center of it, and he's great. And yeah, I really, really like that movie. I'm excited to rewatch that one because I've only seen it once. Uh, the others I'm pretty fucking familiar with and I uh, just watch them on my own time anyway. So this yeah, this group rules. I, I don't really know. I know what I have at number one, but the other ones are like hard for me to, to place two through two through five is hard for me to place. Yeah, me too. It'll be nice to, you know, revisit these with fresh eyes and uh, make that determination. Yeah, exactly. So that's what we're doing next week um, on this, this uh, bonus run. But what do we have on the Wednesday before that? Uh, this Wednesday, I believe, will be uh, Dune in honor yeah. of uh, Villeneuve's sequel coming out on Friday. So Colton and I are going to dig into Dune and uh, discuss that sci-fi titan for a while. Fuck yeah. So we got Dune in a Best Picture Showdown uh, for, for for this upcoming week, Wednesday and Friday. Stoked. going to be awesome. Uh, we're going to keep, keep doing this shit. Uh, then we'll have one more. After the showdown, we'll have one more uh, of these bonus uh, Oscar episodes and I, I cannot wait to do that one that one's going to be a long big heavy episode <laughs> I'm stoked for that one but uh, for now we're going to focus on the showdown so watch those movies if you want come back and uh, hang out with us and uh, we'll see you on Wednesday <laughs>